is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited about today's episode and I've been looking forward to it for quite some time now, but I needed to get this grow room set up before I could do it and that is some more complete growing guides. I promised all of you that I would be doing some complete growing guides on tropicals. The thing is, is I really kind of kept, kept kicking the can down the road and I said, finally, it's got to happen. I've got these beautiful grow lights on. I've got to get my tropicals down there. I took them from all around the house. I've got a really large tropical collection and uh, I kind of just consolidated them underneath this grow light and a half as, uh, as kind of their, hopefully their final home because it's really nice down here and it's a lot better than some of my windows uh, around my house. So in the process of moving them down here, I said, you know what, let's do the growing guide on them. So throughout this little mini series of complete growing guides, we're gonna be picking plants from our tropical collection and discussing how to grow them from start to finish. Now I do wanna let it be known that I am, I'm aware that none of these are fruiting size. All these plants are at different stages of development and some are smaller than others because of the age that I started them and acquired them. Some I started from tiny seedlings, some I started from seed. And so they're all different, but none of them are at full fruiting size yet. And so I just wanna let everyone know that throughout this complete growing guide series that I'm aware that they're not fully mature yet and that they could die. But the thing is, is that these plants, when I give you, you know, the pH, the soil, uh, you know, the soil conditions that they like, the watering conditions that they like, the temperature, the sunlight, none of that changes from seedling to fully mature fruiting plant. And I understand it's one of the biggest things that all of you have commented is that, well, you're not showing the complete phase of life. You are, you know, you are aware that a lot of these crops really won't be able to produce fruit for five to seven years. I mean, I have a coffee tree back here that I started about a year ago, and this is probably one of the longest uh, growing plants that you'll have in your in your tropical collection before it fruits, and uh, and it can take up to seven years for that to fruit. So, you know, it's just something that I'm not gonna wait seven years because YouTube might not even be around in seven years. I'd rather get the information out now. So like I said, let's start with how to grow the avocado. Avocados are a very easy house plant to grow because they like arid conditions. One of the things that uh, you know a lot of people do that ends up killing them is overwatering. So in starting this video, I'm not sure which I really wanna start with, but I think I'll start with soil because that's usually the most important when it comes to arid plants. So the, the soil of the avocado actually is more sand than anything else. In fact, I have about 75% sand, 25% potting mix, and then I do have an all-purpose fertilizer that I've mixed in, that being trifecta. That's what I use for all of my plants. So um, the reason why I have so much sand in here is because avocados grow in very sandy soil. They don't like a lot of uh, moisture around the roots and they'll form root rot. As you can see, there's absolutely no stress on these leaves at all. The reason is because it drains very quickly. If I pour about a gallon of water in here, um, I find that about a half a gallon will come out the bottom. Now I do have a, a water tray in the bottom that kind of acts as a self-watering or like a wicking system, but that kind of just stays down there until the plant needs it. The whole purpose though, behind what I'm saying with the soil is that it needs to be very well draining. If it's not, it'll hold on to too much moisture and the avocado will inevitably suffer from root rot. It just will. Um, they grow them in Mexico and, and Florida and California, very arid locations, not a ton of rain at all. Um, so they don't get watered that often, but when they do, um, you know, I will water them uh, a, a fair amount so that they can kind of, so the whole soil gets saturated. Um, and that leads me to watering. So watering is very important when it comes to avocados and the time that you do them. Um, so when you water an avocado, you don't wanna water it on a regular schedule. Arid climates do not get water on a regular schedule. In fact, I let my tree tell me when I need to water it. The, the way I can tell it needs to be watered is the leaves right now are quite, they're uh, quite stiff and they're, uh, they're very upright. When a, when a tree needs a little bit of water, it will actually begin slightly drooping. Not flopping, but just slightly drooping. And the leaves will lose a little bit of their sheen. 
The reason why they lose a little bit of their sheen is because it's actually losing, the cell structure is deflating and it's causing the, the leaf structure to go limp. It's not dangerous. It will kind of stress the tree out, but in my opinion, it's far better to let the, go, the, let the tree go through a tiny bit of stress than it is to not let the tree tell you anything and then just keep watering it and then suffer from, from root rot. Once an avocado has root rot, you have about one month to fix the root rot issue before it's too late. Um, the first signs of root rot is that the lower leaves will start to turn yellow and drop before the top leaves. And that is usually the, the first signs of root rot. Oftentimes people think it's a nutrient deficiency because the veins will start to turn yellow and it looks like a nitrogen deficiency. It's generally not, especially because uh, the next thing that we'll talk about is that avocados are not that have you feeders, which is what I wanna talk about with fertilizing. Um, but, but to finish up the watering, um, like I said, I water a gallon at a time, but I'll only maybe water them twice a month, maybe three times a month at most. And again, I let the plant tell me how much it needs to be watered. This obviously varies because once I take the plant outside in the summer, I don't water it as much because it rains, obviously. Don't just miss the top because there's really no roots at the top. There will be some, but most of your roots and on an avocado tree, because it is a drought tolerant plant and a plant that likes arid climates, the roots will go very, very deep and they have thick, wiry, just gnarly roots. They don't have fine fibrous roots like you do with some of your other plants. So that's why a deep watering is far better with avocados and infrequent watering at that. So now I wanna talk about fertilizing because I think fertilizing is also very important. When it comes to fertilizing, I only give it a nitrogen rich fertilizer once a year. And I do that in the spring. The reason why I do that is because avocados use pretty much most of their nitrogen during the growing part of the season. And then when it enters fall, I actually dial it back and add more of an all purpose fertilizer. So you might be asking yourself, Luke, you said you use Trifecta Plus in the very beginning. And I do, I absolutely do. What I do differently is I add Trifecta Plus all the time in the spring and the fall. But in the spring, I'll also add a little bit of extra fish emulsion or blood meal, which is primarily mostly nitrogen, to give it a little bit extra nitrogen that it will kind of register as uh, kind of the, the growing season. Because when it's indoors and you're in Michigan and even outdoors for that matter, Really nothing, will, uh, really nothing will tell it, hey, it's the growing season, because the growing season in California and Florida is like 85 degrees and 90% humidity. So you're not gonna get that. And the signal to the, to the plant really won't get there until mid to late summer. So the best thing we can do is kind of just stimulate it through nutrients rather than climate conditions, which is what would normally happen. The next thing that I wanna talk about is pH. This is very, very important, folks, very important, but it's something that's not very difficult to get. Um, the thing you need is slightly acidic soil. As long as it's around 6.5 to six, you're fine. And the final thing I wanna talk about uh, is sunlight and, uh, and humidity. So very important, humidity is, is crucial with growing avocados because they are an arid climate crop. Um, they do not like super humid conditions for a very long time only during the growing season, which is about a month, uh, they, can, they can tolerate it. After the main growing season, um, you kind of consider that like the, the Santa Ana period of, of um, the season where you get a lot of humidity coming off of the ocean. So I always say, just keep it above 35, 40% and you're fine, um, but try to not have it in a super humid location where it's gonna be getting like 65, 70% humidity year round, because it really does not need that. And then the final thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, when it came to temperature. Obviously, avocados are very tropical. You don't see them growing in you know, Michigan naturally. However, there are cold hardy avocados that do exist. They'll, exi they'll uh, peacefully exist down to 30 degrees without a problem. These are known as cold hardy avocados because of obviously their, their cold hardy nature but they don't, uh, you know, they don't come in a dwarf version. Um, and so this avocado here, since it's a dwarf, is, uh, is a day avocado, like I said, D-A-Y, like the day. And, uh, and so this avocado is really only zone hardy to about zone nine. And so you gotta be able to give it temperatures above 75 degrees at a pretty consistent rate because it doesn't really drop down below that point. These can tolerate temperatures of around 50 degrees, 
but that's where they start taking some stress. So that's why in our house or outside, I make sure that it's just above that temperature. And uh, what's really nice too is uh, is they they can handle those temperature variances quite well because um, because they're they're kind of used to it. Um, in the high desert regions and very arid regions, you can get a cold snap without you know without any warning at all. And and they've been surviving there for quite some time. But um, you know a cold snap in an arid climate like California is like 45, 50, 50 degrees. Um, still nothing like here in Michigan. So um, yeah. But that's really how to grow avocados. Super easy. I really hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. I really hope you try growing avocados. It's something that um, a lot of people try growing from seed. And the one thing I would caution you is growing from seed is number one, very tricky. And number two, can take a very, very, very long time. I would really encourage you to get a grafted avocado. The reason why is because grafted avocados, as you can see, are going to be fruiting within about a year and a half, two years of you getting them. I got this as a very small seedling. In fact, it's probably tripled in size and I've since pruned it back to kind of keep it a little more bushy because you can do that with avocados and they really don't mind. But the thing about avocados is that uh, if they're not grafted, they'll grow 40, 50, 60 feet tall and they can sometimes take 10 to 15 years to produce fruit. So by all means go for it but i've seen a lot of people try to sprout avocados by putting the pit in the toothpicks and then sitting it in the water and you just you're not going to get anything for such a long time that it's far better to just go with the grafted avocado and you can usually get them uh, fairly inexpensively i got this one online uh, from a site called fast growing trees um, it's a really reputable site, but I'm not sponsored by them by any means. There's, they're just, they have a good selection and they're usually sold out. So you got to kind of join the wait list and look for them. But um, these will uh, do really well for you. So as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.